Okay, let's try this question. This is gonna be a tricky one. Five students took a math test before and after tutoring. Their scores were as follows, right here. Using a 0.05 level of significance, test the claim that the tutoring is effective in raising the math scores. And which of the following is the conclusion? Okay. So how do we do this? So, so I know what's hard is, is, is trying to figure out what, what kind is this? What kind of test is this? Well, what, what's supposed to, what will hopefully jump off the page for you here is this before and after. What is before and after? What do we always do with before and after? Down at the notes here, let me use the exam for notes. Do you see it right here? It's part of two dependent matched pair means, before and after, actor, actress, couple, male, female, husband, wife, brother, sister. Anything like that is matched pairs. This is a matched pair problem, dependent matched pairs. I, see, see how they're matched up here? This is these two numbers are matched up. What do you mean? Well, they're the same person. Right, it's five students who took a math test before and after tutoring. It's a, it's a way of testing if tutoring is helping them do better. So they took one, they took a math test before tutoring. This person A here, subject A, took the math test before tutoring, got a seventy-one. Then took a similar math test after tutoring, got seventy-five, got a better score. Looks like the tutoring helped him or her. Next subject, subject B. Got a 66 before the tutoring, got a 75 after the tutoring, improved almost a whole grade, almost 10%, etc. Looks like the C went down for some reason. C had, C, C had bad tutoring or didn't learn anything during the tutoring. The C went, got worse after the tutoring, but everybody else went up. D went up three points. E went up 12 points, quite a bit, right? So most of the students did better on the math test after tutoring. But my point is these numbers are matched because they're connected, right? This 71 and 75 are not just like two random, totally separate, different people numbers, are they? They're matched up. That's the same person before and after the test. So that's why we call these matched pairs. They're matched in pairs. So this is a matched pairs problem. Okay, so what do we do in a matched pairs problem? Well. We see that here again with the before and after. So first thing, um, we're going to have the hypothesis test is going to be equal, greater, less, not equal. Okay, put the data in L1, L2, second mode, quit. All right, so the first step is over here. Step number one is we're going to put the data in L1. So, be, so, so this one over right here is bigger for us. This is going to be... Um, the L1 data right here, and this is going to be the L2 data. So L1 will be 71, 66, 67, 77, 75. Put that in your calculator. And then the L2 data is the next list. Here, I'll change the color here. And that's going to be 75, 75. This is how they did after, right? The L2 is after. So notice this is after the tutoring. And this is before the two. Okay. Now, uh, so let's go back to the notes here. So what do we do? So, so put the data in L1, L2. When you're done, hit second mode, quit. Quit that. Then go L1 minus L2 stored in L3. Okay. So the next step over here is to do that. Move over here. Okay. For step one, and now we're going to go. Oops. So L1 minus L2 stored in L3. So, um, well, here's how to look on the screen. It'll do arrow like that. So this is L1, which you get with by hitting second and the one button, um, and L2. The second and the two button, and this is store. It's in the lower left corner of your calculator, down by the on button, just above the on button. And L3, second three. So, okay, so we just stored them in that. So there's the second step. 
Let me follow. Okay, so what does it say to do next? So next, I'm down here. So we did that. You know, L1 minus L2 stored in L3. Then do T test or T interval, but we, we don't have a confidence interval here. We have a test. We're doing a test, a hypothesis test, right? So we're doing T test. Tracking with me, you would only do T interval if you were doing a confidence interval. They don't want a confidence interval. They want us to test if the tutoring works. And, and we're going to draw a conclusion, sufficient evidence, insufficient, all that kind of stuff. Okay, T test, choose data. Mu zero is zero, list is L3. Oh, okay. Now, coming over here. So we're going to choose. Stat, test, and down, I think it's just number two. T test. Yeah, number two, T test. Okay, and then for the input, we're gonna choose data and hit enter. So as soon as you do that, then you've got the mu sub zero, and then the list and the frequency to so mu sub zero is zero, it told us. List is L3, frequency is always one. Okay, now here, here's the most important part of the problem and where most people get confused, right here. They say, should the mu be not equal to mu zero or less than mu zero or greater than mu zero. This is the most important part of the problem and where most people get off track. So let me slow down here and be really careful. How do you know which of those it is? How do you know if, if, if when you're trying to do a test, you've got to be careful. What, what, are we, what are we testing on this one? What is it we're testing? Well, they said, Remember the claim, the claim always tells you, look for the word claim, test the claim that the tutoring is effective, effective in raising the math scores. You're right there. Claim, the claim is always what we're testing. Effective tutoring, tutoring is effective in raising the scores on the test, right? So that's what tutoring is supposed to do, make you a better score. Well, how do you, what does that mean? Not equal, less, greater, raising. So we go, oh, raising, raising is higher. So we'll, so we'll choose greater. Wrong. If you do that, you're going to get the problem wrong. But I know that's a common mistake. Why? How, how do you know that? Well, think about what we just did here. Let me help you. Um, how, how would you, just, just looking at this data for a minute, just let's just let's just be real. Always try to be as real as you can with these things. You know, as you as you look at this data list, let me go over here with you real quick. Oh, sorry, I'm bumping everything around here. Look over here. How would you deter? Do you do we think that the tutoring is look at the scores? Do you think the tutoring is effective? We said it we did, right? In general, because why? Because look at these two, right? The person got a higher score afterwards, didn't they? Now, and this person got a way higher score afterwards. This person went down, but he's the only one that went down. This person went up and this person went way up, 12 points. So it looks like the tutoring is working. Why? Because the after scores are generally, most of them higher than the before scores. Well, do you realize those are the L3 numbers, right? What is, see what it says right here? L1 minus L2 stored in L3. That's what we just told the calculator to do. We said, hey, calculator, take my L1 numbers, which is what? The before numbers. Subtract my L2 numbers, which is the after numbers, and store it, put it into L3. So as we made an L3, and we subtract, we took L1 minus L2, what's that? Negative four. Subtract this, it'd be a negative nine. Subtract this, two. Subtract this, negative three. Subtract this, negative 12. Right, or you could put them over here. Negative four minus nine, two, minus three, minus 12, those either place. But my point is, most of those are negative, aren't they? 
Most of these are negative. Only one's positive. Why? Because the scores got higher afterwards, which is what we want. That's a good thing. That means the tutoring's working. So when you take L1, you take the before scores and you subtract the after, right? Top minus bottom or L1 minus L2, either way, you mostly get negative answers because usually the second number, the after is higher. So you're getting negative L3 values. That's what you want. That means the tutoring is working, right? So my point is, let's come over here and, and write this. When L1 minus L2 comes out equals L3, when, when L3, when L3 is negative, it means the tutoring is effective, doesn't it? Right, when the L3s are coming out negative, that means the tutoring is effective because that means, because L3 is L1 before minus after. That's what L3 is, it's before minus after, it's L1 minus L2. So you want the after to be higher. Whenever you subtract two things, if the second number is higher, see how most of these second numbers are higher than the first numbers, you're gonna get, get negative answers, okay? So L3 negative, what is, what is negative? Less than zero, that's the one we want. You might say, where's the zero? Mu, mu zero is zero. This is, this is zero See right here. We told the calculator, calculator mu zero is zero. So this mu zero right here is really zero. And we want, we want less than zero. That is effective. So this is tricky. This confuses many people. Most people just look at, oh, raising, greater. No, nope. it's more tricky than that. You have to be careful. You have to be clear on what you're telling the calculator to do. I know, I know this probably feels hard. It is hard. This is a science, this is a uh, college level math science class, right? So we're going to have some hard concepts. This is, you know, this is required. This certifies you throughout the world. You can transfer this class. So anyway, I'm just giving you the reasons why we have some hard things in here. I know this is hard. So did everybody see that? Do you see that? So how do you, how, again, how are you going to be able to do this on the exam? You've got to be clear on what L3 is. L3 is, you know, we, we always are telling the calculator on these matched pair problems. We always go L1 minus L2 stored into L3. So, and then it's L3 we're testing. How do we know? Because right here, we told the calculator, uh, do your, do your uh, t-test on the data in L3. Which list did, did the calculator go to? The L3 list. That's what the, this list of numbers here is what the calculator is examining to decide whether the tutoring was effective or not. And that's what we would look at too, right? If you were looking at these numbers and somebody said, hey, what do you think? Is the tutoring working? You would look at, at, at the differences. You would say, well, this one went up and that one went up and this guy went down a little bit, but all the rest went up. So yeah, I think it's working, right? Meaning you're subtracting these numbers and getting negative. I know you wouldn't think about negative, but that's really what's happening, right? When the after numbers are higher, then you subtract L1 minus L2, right here, L1 minus L2 to be L3. When these guys are mostly negative, meaning, and what is negative? Negative is less than zero. L3 negative means less, right? Numbers that are negative are less than zero, aren't they? So that's why we go less than zero. So that's really important. All right, probably beat that drum enough. Once you, once you do that, if you do greater or not equal, it's gonna give you the wrong answer. Hit calculate. And when you do, you're gonna get a p-value um, of point oh. Four nine nine. All right, now now we're ready to test. How does that compare to the alpha level? Where's my alpha level? Oh, it's right here. You can how do you see it? It's right there. Alpha level, alpha zero point oh five, like it usually is. So how does that compare? Well, that's uh, less, barely. Uh -huh. 
0499, right? If you lined it up, 0. 0.0499. How does that compare to, oh, you know, if you're comparing decimals and you're not sure, line up the decimals and fill in zeros everywhere stuff is missing, right? Because if there's nothing there, it's zero. So when I say 05, that's the same as 0500, right? And 0499. So you can see 500 is a little bigger than 499, or 499 is a little lower than 500. So the p value is just barely less. So what does that mean? You know, you've done this enough, right? If the P is low, P is less than alpha, then HO must go away, meaning reject HO, keep H1, and that always means strong evidence. Keep H1, strong evidence. Keep H1, strong evidence. Well, wait, what is what is H1? We never really wrote HO and H1, did we? Let's do that. HO and H1. How to do it? Look at, let's look at the notes. So help us. So HO is always equal. H1 is greater than, less than, not equal. So HO was that mu1 equals mu2. And, and what's, what's H1? Well, it's what, it's what we're trying to test. What was the claim we were trying to test? Uh, test? Test the claim that the tutoring is effective. Test the claim the tutoring is effective. So if it's, it's effective, remember it's effective right here. Um, if it's negative, if it's less, tutoring is effective, meaning if less here, this is if the before, is less than the after. Remember, you got to be clear on what mu1 and mu2 are. Before is less than after. Before is less than after. That's what we set up here, right? That, you know, that's, that's what it means. So it's less than. Okay, so we're keeping H1. The tutoring is effective, right? Before is less than after. We're keeping H1. The tutoring is effective. That was, that was what was being claimed, right? If the scores are equal, that would be, that would mean not effective, right? Not effective. You agree with me? You see that? If, if, if the scores before and after were the same, were equal, that would be not effective. The tutoring is not effective. Remember, HO is always the equals, and H1 is always the less, greater, or not equal. So HO is always equals. If they are equal, if the scores before and after are equal, then the tutoring is making no difference. It's not helping at all. The tutoring is not effective. But if the before is less than the after, right? the after is higher, then the tutoring is effective. And that's what we said, right? P was low, HO must go away. Cross that out. HO is always the equals, which is not effective, right? If the scores are equal, it's not effective. And so we're going with H1. We keep H1, strong evidence. Um, and that is that, that's the claim. It's effective. The tutoring is effective. So there's strong evidence that the tutoring is effective. We come back up here and we say, um, there is sufficient evidence. Oh, not effective. Nope. Uh, sufficient evidence was effective. There it is. It's not these not sufficient, not sufficient. There was strong evidence the tutoring was effective. Okay, so matched pair ones are kind of challenging. you got to be really clear on what L1 and L2 are and what it means to be effective. It means the before is lower than the after. That's the whole crucial part of it, right? Which means if we subtract them, L1 minus, right? If the before is smaller, the after is bigger, the L3s come out mostly negative, meaning less than zero. So that's why we chose less than zero for our test right here. That's what we're testing. That's what H1 really is. So there we go.